I'm Dr. Jasmine Sarkar, a board certified veterinary anesthesiologist, here to talk to you on behalf of ABMA TV. I want to talk to you about general anesthesia. What is anesthesia? Technically, anesthesia is a controlled unconsciousness, kind of like a controlled sleep. It's used so you don't feel or remember pain or move during a medical procedure. Some veterinary procedures need to be performed with your pet under anesthesia. For example, dentistry, surgery, and some diagnostic imaging. We certainly don't want our pets to feel pain, and balanced anesthesia prevents that. Anesthesia also prevents movement, and that's beneficial because veterinarians need to be very precise during these procedures, and movement could cause injury or lead to complications. Going under anesthesia ourselves can be scary, so it's understandable that you'd be anxious about your pet being anesthetized. Anesthesia for animals has come a long way and it's safer than it ever was before. A well-trained veterinary team further reduces your pet's risk. Before receiving anesthesia, your veterinarian should perform a thorough physical exam on your pet, review their medical history, and discuss any risk factors that could impact your pet's health or safety during anesthesia or the procedure. Your veterinarian may also perform blood tests to check for any indications of a developing or underlying medical problem that could increase anesthetic risk. If you have any questions about your pet's health or his or her anesthetic risk, ask your veterinarian for an explanation that will help you make an educated decision. Your pet will usually be given a sedative before receiving anesthesia to calm them, reduce their stress, and make the process go more smoothly. An intravenous, or IV catheter, is usually placed to provide fluids and medications and to provide immediate access to the blood in case of an emergency. Anesthetic medications may be delivered by gas inhalation, injection, the IV, or a combination of these. While under anesthesia, your pet should receive monitoring and care comparable to what you'd receive if you underwent anesthesia. Support should include an IV catheter for fluids and any necessary medications, and a breathing tube inserted into your pet's trachea or windpipe to deliver the anesthetic gas and provide oxygen to your pet's lungs. Heat support should also be provided because anesthesia commonly causes body temperature to decrease. Monitoring is an important aspect of your pet's safety because problems can be diagnosed and addressed as they come up. Like any medical procedure, anesthesia does have risks. Some risks are minor and self-limiting, while others are life-threatening. Anesthesia-related deaths are rare, though, and while complications can occur, the veterinary team should take all of the necessary precautions to ensure that your pet is safe and can handle anesthesia. Most healthy pets don't have any problems with anesthesia, and in general, the risks are more closely related to the procedure being done and your pet's general health than to the anesthesia itself. The risks of anesthesia should always be considered along with the benefits, and the risks and benefits of any alternatives to anesthesia should also be considered. In an emergency life-threatening situation, the benefit of performing the emergency procedure usually outweighs the risks of anesthesia. For elective procedures, there's more opportunity to postpone anesthesia if some risks that are present can be reduced by treatment prior to the anesthesia and procedure. Once the procedure is done and it's time for your pet to wake up from anesthesia, your pet will likely be placed in a quiet, semi-dark cage or kennel to recover. Pets should be closely monitored during this time to make sure that they are recovering normally and that care is provided quickly if there are any problems. Pads and blankets may be used to keep your pet warm during recovery. Fluids and or medications may be continued through recovery Depending on the procedure and your pet's medical condition, he or she may be sent home later in the day once adequately recovered from anesthesia, or they may need to remain in the hospital. Still have questions about anesthesia? Talk to your veterinarian about the protocols for anesthesia at the clinic. What happens, who's involved, and how your pet will be taken care of afterward. Your veterinarian can discuss the procedure and protocols with you, which will help set your mind at ease. If your pet is at high risk for anesthesia or has had previous anesthesia complications, your veterinarian may choose to consult a veterinary anesthesiologist or may refer you to a hospital with a board-certified anesthesiologist on staff. 
Veterinary anesthesiologists have received advanced training in anesthetic management and are also available for consultation or management of your pet for routine procedures. While the idea of your pet being under anesthesia can be stressful, rest assured that the care and well-being of your pet is the first thing on your veterinarian's mind. And because our pets can't talk to us and don't understand the importance of sitting still for some procedures, it's necessary that we use anesthesia for them. Remember, if you have any questions regarding any part of the process, ask your veterinarian. They will be able to answer your questions and provide more details on the procedure and what kind of anesthesia will be administered. For more information, visit avma.org and acvaa.org.